Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys caught my little short I made there. Um, if you recall my last video, I mentioned the uh, cat that I found at work that uh, we ended up having to amputate a leg and uh, how it was keeping us all busy and everything. Well, I, I shared a uh, shared a short little video of little Camry, uh, named her Camry because, well, she was found underneath a Camry at work, so um, that's what we went with. But cutest little kitten in the world, so uh, go check it out. Uh, let's go ahead and get into today's video. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about Git. Um, and I know Git isn't a real exciting topic, and I know most of you probably have a pretty good idea of what you're doing with Git, but there's a few different things that I wanted to talk about um, that are fairly new to me that um, I think are going to really improve my workflow and just kind of help me out. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and launch a browser here. So we're going to hit Mod Shift B. I'm going to launch my Brave browser here. We're going to go into my GitLab page, and we are going to go ahead and just create a repository to use for this video. So we are going to go up here to the little plus, we're going to click that plus and do new project or repository. Uh, we're going to create a blank project, um, we're going to call it cool repo and we are going to make it public um, and I'm going to go ahead and initialize it with a readme. I don't usually do this but we're going to go ahead and do it today. So we're going to go ahead and create project and we now have cool repo created on GitLab. So let's go ahead and go to Workspace 2 now and let's launch a terminal. And I don't normally work in my home directory on these, but we're just gonna do that today because again, I'm just gonna get rid of this, but let's go ahead and clear the screen and let's go ahead and clone that. So the first thing we're gonna go over is cloning. And I'm just gonna do this briefly because if you have used Git at any point in your time uh, in your life, then I'm sure you know how to clone a repository. But for those of you who might not know, um, if you're looking to clone a repository, what you gotta do is come over here into the repository itself, click on the clone link. This is one of many ways to do it, but um, you can do it with SSH or HTTPS. Um, but what you want to do is you want to copy if you're doing SSH or copy here if you're doing HTTPS. We are going to go ahead and use SSH. Um, so you can see right here the path is git at gitlab.com colon jped slash coolrepo.git. So we can copy that and we can then go over here and we're going to run the git clone command and if we do a mod shift v that's going to go ahead and copy it in our terminal or paste it in our terminal excuse me um, and we can see we have git clone git at gitlab.com colon jped cool repo dot git we're going to go ahead and hit enter that's going to clone us into that repo um, and there we go if i do an ls on my directory now you can see i have cool repo right here so let's go ahead and cd into cool repo and hit enter you can see by my path here i'm in home jake cool repo and it is the main branch of the cool repo um, repository so let's go ahead and clear the screen again and let's do an ls while we're in this uh, you can see what we've got right now is we have the readme now i'm going to cover a few other things with git today i'm going to go and these are just going to be brief really high level overviews like you're twenty thousand feet above looking down we're not going to dig real deep. We're not going to come down real low. And um, we're just going to basically go over these really fast. So the other things I'm going to go over are uh, we've already done cloning. Um, you should know how to uh, push your repositories. Um, we're going to go over, over um, adding and committing. And then I think we'll do creating a new branch and checking out that branch. Um, so basically, let's go ahead and go with um, adding. Uh, so basically, when you want to do an add is basically when you've done any type of um, addition to your repository, whether it be editing a file, whether it be creating a new file, a new directory, any changes you've made to this repository at any point in time, you're going to want to do a git add and then a git commit and then obviously a git push. So let's go ahead and go over these one by one. So right now all we have is the readme. So I am going to actually do a um, uh, vim into the readme and hit enter. And you can see this is just a generic readme. It starts you up with some directions and stuff like that. We're going to go ahead and get rid of all of this. So let's just go ahead and go into visual mode. We're going to go to the last line and we're going to go to the end of it and we're going to hit D. And we're going to delete that whole file. So what we're going to do now is in insert mode, we're going to say hello this is a readme for a test repo for my spectacular YouTube. <laughs> 
YouTube uh, channel. <laughs> there we go. You can see my spelling is not great. My typing is not great either. But here we go. We have this readme now, and it says, hello, this is a readme for a test repo. We are going to write and quit. Now, if we go back over here and we look, you can see we've still got the old readme there. We can refresh the page, and it is still the old readme. Why is that? Well, obviously, because we haven't added, committed, or pushed that to the repo. So we're going to do a add now. So what you want to do to when you've made a change to your repository and you're ready to push that to your remote um, repo, as opposed to it just being on your local machine, what you're going to do is you're going to do a git add. And we're just going to do a period. I'm going to go over a few different things here after this, but I just want to get this pushed. Uh, so we're going to do git add period, and then we are going to do a commit. So we're going to do git commit, and we give it the M flag, and then we're going to go ahead and put our commit message. So we're just going to put our first uh, commit. Now you can put initial commit, you can put whatever you want in there, but basically a general rule of thumb for your commit messages, and before you call me out on this because I'm horrible at it, when you write a commit message, you want it to basically be as informational as possible, but as little as possible. So you want a short commit message, if at all possible, uh, usually like 50 characters maybe, um, but you also want it to say everything you possibly can to make sure that when somebody looks at that commit message, they know exactly what goes on in that commit. Um, for this purposes of this video, we're just doing this to show you how to get kind of some basic Git workflow, so I'm not too concerned about um, demonstrating proper Git commit messages, and I'm not the person to be demonstrating that anyway because I'm horrible at it. So we're going to do git commit dash m for the message, and first commit, we're going to hit enter. You can see we have one file changed, one insertion, and we have 92 deletions. So that means we deleted 92 lines of code and we inserted one. So let's go ahead and do a git push, and we're just going to do git at gitlab.com colon jped slash cool repo dot git and hit enter. Now it's going to take a second and there we go. We have pushed that. Now if we come over here and we refresh this page, we can now see that the readme just says hello, this is a readme for a test repo for my spectacular YouTube channel. Ta-da! That is awesome. Now, let's go back over here to our local machine, and let's go ahead and add a file. So we are going to vim, and we'll do file1.txt, and hit enter. So we are in file1.txt, and we're going to say, hi, this is file1. We are going to write and quit, we are going to go through, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a git add. We are going to do a git commit, but we're going to change that to second commit and hit enter. And then we are going to do a git push at GitLab. So go ahead and let that happen again. Just did that real quick because we just went through all that. I'm just trying to build up this repo and kind of show you general workflow. So now we have the readme and we have the file1.txt. When we click on that, we can see it says, hi, this is file1. So now we have everything pushed to our remote repo and or to our remote and now we have all of that stuff on our local as well so let's go ahead and do something here let's vim into um, the readme and hit enter we're gonna go into insert mode um, actually let's go to the end of the line and then go into insert mode no let's go to the end of the line and then go into insert. you're just not gonna do that for me are you so let's go down here and then hit enter and we are in insert mode so yada 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 boy this thing does not want to participate uh, with me very well today so anyway we are here so let's go ahead and add a second line here let's go ahead and put a space in there you can see these pluses on the side here in my uh, vim ide quote unquote ide <laughs> in my uh, text editor here that show that I have added these lines um, and we are going to add a second line that says this is a second line we are going to write and quit and now let's go ahead and vim into file onetxt and let's go to the end here let's go into insert mode and let's do this is also a second line in a different file and let's write and quit. So now we have made a change to both the files in this repository. So if I do a git status and hit enter, you can see I have modified the readme.txt or the readme.md and the file.txt. So I have changed both of them. They have both been um, 
edited. So now we are going to do the ad, but we're going to do this a different way because let's say you have this big project that you're working on and you've got like 10 different files in there and say you're working on multiple files at a time and you've changed, made some changes in three or four of them, but you don't want to push all of them. You're not done yet. You don't want to push all of them, but you do want to push, excuse me, you do want to push a couple of them. Now you can go through and just do a git add and add each individual file by like doing git add and do readme and do um, file one. So doing this is no big deal. Um, if you've got one or two files, this is an easy way to do it. Um, this ignores any other changes you've made and in the other files and it only adds the files that you want it to. So this is one way to go about doing that. but. If you've got multiple and you want to add from multiple files and say you've created a file that you've made some changes in and you're ready to push those changes but you've made changes in it as well that you're not quite ready to push yet. Well, there's a way you can do this and if you it's actually pretty simple. If you do the git add and do the dash p flag and that's it. Now we go ahead and hit enter. And what's that give us? That gives us a status. And basically we're looking at the readme right now. You can see right here and we're looking at the readme and it shows we've added a line and we've added this as a second line. So we can say this is, we do we want to stage this hunk right here. Well, okay, let's go ahead and say yes, we want to stage that hunk. But now we look at file1.txt. Okay, so it showed me that that's another file that's been modified. Hi, this is file1. We added that empty line and we added this is also a second line into in a different file. Do we want to stage this hunk? And let's go ahead and say no, I don't want to stage that because I am not done editing the file1.txt. We hit enter. Now if we do git status and hit enter, you can see we have one that's modified and staged and ready to go and we have one that is modified that is still unstaged and it's not ready to be committed. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. Let's do a git commit dash m update to readme dot md and we hit enter and we do the git push command again the git push git at gitlab.com colon jpeg cool repo dot git and we hit enter and it gives us a second we get the push now let's go back over to our repository here let's go ahead and refresh it and let's look at okay we have pushed that this is a second line in the readme now let's look at the file1.txt file1.txt has not been changed we still have hi this is file one we have not pushed the new edits that so if you've made many changes, the, re the, the reason I like to use the git, um, git add dash p command as opposed to git add dot or git add and then the file name is because giving that dash p flag as opposed to the file name or the period not only lets me choose which, com which commits I want to add or which commits I want to make changes wise, um, it also allows me to just do a quick scan over to make sure that I did what I wanted to do. Like it shows me that status, it shows me exactly what the change is and I can go, yep, that's what I wanted to do. Or I can say, oh no, look at that. I didn't catch that when I was editing that file. Now I see it. No, I don't want to commit that or no, I don't want to add that. So the git add dash p is a great tool to use if you've made a bunch of different changes in a couple in multiple files and you just want to go over them all to make sure that yep that's good yep that's good nope I don't like that one I don't want to add that let me change it before we do this um, and yeah so the git add dash p is a great tool and uh, it's a great way to actually add stuff to your repository or to your um, commits so we've gone over uh, git clone We've gone over git add, we've gone over git commit a bit. Um, let's go ahead and create a new branch for this repo, shall we? So if we do git branch and hit enter, you can see we have one branch. It's the main branch, it's right here in our list. It's got a star next to it, it's highlighted. That shows that's the branch we're on. Uh, I have a, um, a function in my bash RC that actually shows my status and everything right here in my repos. Um, right on my prompt so that way I know which branch I'm on but let's go ahead and create a new branch so let's do git branch and let's do testing now you might ask why would you want to create another branch um, uh, you know I'm not a developer I'm not working with a team blah 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 yada 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 well for a lot of reasons you might not need one um, but it's always nice to use um, I haven't been using branches but I'm gonna start um, it's really cool to be able to have a working 
program or file or whatever that you've created and then you have a branch of that that you can make any feature updates that you can make any um, additions or reconfigurations you can do all that on the working branch or the other branch aside from your main branch and you can verify everything works before you then push it to your main branch so you can have a working ready to go copy and also a copy that you're working on making updates it's basically like having a stable and a working branch in a distro it's just makes common sense to be able to edit your files without messing up a working file really great way to actually go about this so now let's run that git branch command again and hit enter and you can see we have the main and the testing and we are still on the main branch so how do we go about the testing branch well actually let's go back over here to our repo and um, let's go back up here a level and you can see we're on our cool repo but if you click on this tab right here <clears throat> you can see it still shows only one branch right so what happens if we do get status and hit enter it still shows we have that modified branch or that modified file so we're not going to add that yet so let's do get branch and we did testing right so we hit enter so we've already got a, a branch named testing and I was doing the wrong command so let's actually switch to that branch so excuse me let's do git and we'll do checkout and do testing there we go Jake so now you can see that we have one modified file and we have switched to the branch testing <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do a git status and hit enter well we've got a modified file do we want to push that modified file yeah why not let's go ahead and do a git add dash p yes we want to add that let's do git commit dash m and do initial commit testing and hit enter and let's do git push git at gitlab.com and now let's go ahead and go back over to our remote let's go ahead and refresh the page and we can see we've got the readme still let's go into file one dot text wait a minute this still only has one line why is that we added that but let's go up here now we have this drop down and if we click on that you can see we have testing now let's switch to the testing branch it refreshes the page and look at that now we have in our testing branch the same file one dot txt but it has the updated line that we don't have on the on the main branch so basically the commands you need to know to create a branch are pretty simple you basically use the git branch and then do branch name so this is what you're gonna run replace this with your branch name obviously and that will create a new branch and to actually switch to that branch you're gonna do git checkout and then again branch name so this will switch you over to that branch we're on testing so see right now if I do git uh, checkout and do main and hit enter you can see we've switched to the main branch. If we do an ls, we've got the file1.txt and we got the readme. But let's go ahead and see something here. Let's do a git status and hit enter. It shows nothing to commit working tree clean. Well, let's go ahead and vim into file1.txt. It completely erased that line because that line is now pushed on the testing branch. So now we have a main branch and we have a testing branch. And we have this file1.txt that has two lines in the testing branch and one line in the working branch right so let's go ahead and try something here so say we have um, you can see in this branch we have hi this is file one with a line in between and then this is also the second line in a different file so let's go back here and say this is the second line in this file so again we have this is also a second line in a different file with a space between these two and here we have hi this is file one this is a second line in this file so we are going to write and quit so now we are going to do a git add dash p hit enter so we have this file one dot text has been edited we are yes we're going to add that we're going to do a git commit dash m and we're going to say um, let's see here illustrating merge and error hit enter 
and we are going to do a git push and we're going to push that. So now if we go to our remote repository, we refresh it, we're still in testing. So we've still got, this is file one, this is a, also a second line in a different file. If we switch to the main branch, we say, hi, this is file one, this is a second line in this file. So we have some differences, do we not? Correct. So now we have, say, the main branch that has our working file on it, and we want to merge our um, edits that we've been making in our testing branch. So let's clear the screen. And what you do to merge is you basically get into the branch that you want to merge into. Like, I want to bring the testing branch into my main branch, so I'm going to be on the main branch. And you're going to do the git merge. And then you're just going to use the branch name. So we're going to do git merge and we're going to do testing. And hit enter. What do we got? Uh oh, we have a conflict. So it says auto merging file1.txt. That right there tells you which file has the conflict. And it says the conflict content merge conflict in file1.txt automatic merge failed. Fix conflicts, then commit the results. Okay, now you might ask, well, how do you figure out the conflicts? Well, we know which file the conflicts are in, right? So let's just go ahead and cat that file out. File1.txt, hit enter, and here we go. We know this is the head, this is going to be our main branch. This is the second line in this file, and this is also a second line in a different file. So these are the two issues we're having. So the testing branch says this is also a second line in a different file. The main branch says this is the second line in this file. So how do we do this? What happens here is basically if you're in a dev group or a team, you're going to sit down, you're going to go over this, you're going to collaborate and figure out, okay, what do we actually want in this merge? What do we not want in this merge? And you're basically just going to edit it. Since my development team is literally just me, we are going to go ahead and vim into file1.txt. We're going to delete this, delete this, and delete this. And you know what? I think we want both of those in there. So we're going to leave that as is. I could delete either one of these lines. I could change them both. I could do whatever. But once we do that, we write and quit. We do a git add dash p and hit enter. Needs merge. Okay, so now we do git merge. And we're going to do testing and hit enter. Nope, merge is not possible because you have unmerged files. What's going on? So we're going to do a git commit dash m and do merge fix and hit enter nope error is not possible because you have unmerged file fix the work tree and then use git add so let's do git add period and hit enter let's do git commit dash m merge <laughs> repaired oh uh, file and hit enter and now we are going to do git push and hit enter now we have actually done that and we are good to go. So if we go back over here, we refresh the page. You can see that uh, this has both lines in there now on the main branch. If we go over to the testing branch and hit enter, um, you can see that still only has this is also a second line in a different file. Why is that? Because all it did when you did the merge was take what we have here and merge it into the um, uh, the main branch. It leaves this the same. It doesn't change this branch. It just adds all the changes that are in this branch over to the main branch. So, sorry, that was a little convoluted. I got a little screwed up on my merge fix there, but you kind of get the idea, right? You basically do the merge. It gives you an error. If there is an error or a conflict, you go into the files that have that conflict. You figure out what you need to edit. You edit that file. Then you do a git add, git commit, and, um, uh, a git push or whatever and you can then address that merge but that's kind of what I wanted to talk about uh, hopefully this was helpful to you like I said this was just a really brief really fast high level overview of just man we're gonna brush through this real quick but um, I really highly suggest you check out git if you're not using it now um, even for your own personal machine um, uh, as a way to save your configuration files you can even save projects you're working on just it's a really great tool to be able to use and utilize and um, I'm really starting to fall in love with um, the way git works and the way git even helps my workflow as just an individual who likes to play around on his computer so 
hopefully you guys can find some use out of this and um, hopefully the uh, the video was uh, clear enough for you to understand what I was saying and I didn't butcher anything if I did butcher anything please um, I do a lot of this stuff as I'm learning so um, if I did something incorrect here any of you version control specialists um, please let me know um, so I can improve on what I'm doing as well and yeah um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day a great rest of your evening um, just stay safe and hey everybody God bless